Well, hello and welcome to, I guess, fall in the Rocky Mountains. So we got in quite late last night. There's a bit of rain as well, pitch black. So there wasn't really much uh, worth filming. At least that's what I thought at the time. I basically just backed the trailer in here, unhooked and went to bed. However, it was uh, a little bit of a well, it left some to be desired. I have the tongue maxed out here. I still can't find a tongue jack extension. I actually bought one thinking it would fit and it, did, it doesn't. I believe it's because Lippert uses like a weird internal diameter on their uh, tongue jack. So if you know of uh, an extension, let me know in the comments down below. That would be greatly appreciated. Nevertheless, we find ourselves here in the afternoon already because I did a run down into the state of Montana to go pick up some really cool stuff that I'm actually going to give you like a, um, a sneak peek at. But before I do that, I'm actually going to hook back up. I was talking to the neighbors last night and they had suggested actually pulling straight in this way. That way the front of the, um, the camp has a nice view of the water and that's also where the picnic table and fire pit is. It just kind of makes more sense from an organization flow kind of perspective. But uh, yeah, so we're gonna put the trailer together, quick hook up, spin it around, and the plan is actually probably to park the trailer right about where we are now, and then I'll just be able to, uh, to back the vehicle out. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get at it. What do they say? Nothing, nothing to it but to do it. So.
Cheers. Alright, check this out. I've been waiting. I mean, in truth, I've been wanting to get one of these for years, but I've been waiting a couple weeks now to come pick this up. And, oh, let's see if we can get it out of here. So we have this. This is the Cocopelli XPD. This is their new 2024 redesigned one. And what this is, is it, well, let's read. It's a durable, minimal, and mission-ready pack raft. So a pack raft by its own definition means that you can pack it up and um, go places with it. And what's really, really, really impressive about this kit is how much, well, the fact that it's a kit. For 2024, at least this version of it, you get everything, uh, minus a back brace, but I bought that available separately. So this has the pack, the paddle, a inflator pump, the seat, uh, the seat is separate and it just slides in and oh, oh, uh, a carry bag as well. So how wicked is that? I just noticed here on the end, this is all that's included. I don't know if I can turn that so you can see, but uh, backpack, paddle. Oh, you also get a 4.5 inch fin, which is wicked. It helps these track because the pack rafts, the super light ones without the fin, kind of have like a little wiggle sometimes. Compression straps, presumably for the bag, and the nano barrel pump. So, without further ado, let's see here. Now, what uh, I will say, don't worry about like trying to take in every detail. I'm going to do a dedicated review video on this later. This is just like I said, your, uh, your sneak peek. Now this is the accessory that I was mentioning that I did buy, or maybe I didn't mention it. This is the back brace. And actually something I didn't realize that it had, which is super cool, is it has this little pocket here on the back. So just because this is a inflatable pack raft, you still have to meet all of the Canadian voter safety requirements. So that includes like a safety throw line, a PFD, that's a cool little piece de resistance uh, surprise for later that I'll show you. And um, you know, whistle signaling device, all the stuff. So that would be a wicked spot, I think, to store that so that whenever you take this boat out, you just know that you already have it and it's not like floating around in your feet. So that's kind of my logic. How are we gonna do this? All right, so this is the paddle. Now, what's cool about pack rafts is that, uh, I don't know, I mean, I assume they innovated on this, but maybe not. Normally with like kayak style or what they call double bladed paddles. And is this carbon fiber? I don't know, maybe. I don't think so. I think it's fiberglass. That's okay, it's, it's super lightweight. Um, Normally they're two piece, but in the backpacking world, or sorry, um, pack rafting world, you uh, you get a four piece because it can break down smaller, so you can strap it onto a uh, a backpack a lot easier. You know, like that's the length of it as opposed to you know trying to backpack or hike around or something with uh, like a six foot thing sticking off your bag. I don't want to get this foam anywhere in the nature, but it's really got it taped up here. How nice is that? Great material. PVC as well. Let's see if we can puff it up a bit. Can see better. Your bag, and it would just roll over like that. Um, that's your closure, adjustable sternum strap. Yeah, that's cool though. They have this pocket, it's really nice color as well. There we can 
see the um, the where the fin attaches, and you can probably tell. I'm sure this is no surprise to those who know me. I went with the granite color. The sage looked really nice. Don't get me wrong, but given the opportunity to have like a nice subtle gray, that's absolutely where I'm going. It still does read a little bit green. It's got more of like a like a wet cement kind of look to it. How cool is that? Nice. Well, yeah. Inflating. Very cool. So, yeah, that is it. I think I'm gonna take a few minutes here and kind of inflate everything and get it going and then uh, maybe rendezvous with you a bit later. All right, welcome back to day two. And it's probably a good thing that we're here today as much as I wanted to get on the water last night. I actually ended up discovering not one, but two fairly big problems with this whole setup. The first is that the included pump with the kit actually had the wrong style valve on it. So I spent more time than I care to admit thinking like, gosh, I'm a smart person. Oh, I can't have figured this out. Thinking maybe I was missing a component. I was going back through everything looking for like a missing adapter or something and I uh, never found it. Eventually I ended up caving. I got a bit of reception and I learned that it had what was, um, uh, it was an adapter for a valve called the push-push style valve and not the Leafield D7. Which, if I'm being entirely honest, I don't love this Leafield D7. You have to stick your finger in and kind of twist. It's, I, I, I guess it's what they use in professional settings, but I think that the design can certainly be approved upon. Nevertheless, that was the main issue. Now, how did I get it inflated? Well, it just so happened that I happened to buy a little inflator pump for my sleeping mattress and I managed to use one of the adapters to actually get the majority of this filled up. And then at that point, I was able to blow through the pump, turned off the pump and I was able to blow through it like a straw and that was able to bring it up to pretty close what we see here. And then I've set it out in the sun now for probably the better part of an hour. And uh, it's, I think, brought it up to its you know appropriate uh, pressure. So kind of got lucky there. The second problem that I mentioned though, is I purchased the optional EVA backboard. So that's this really nice thing. We saw the pocket on the back. It's supposed to use the compression straps from like if you're packing up the boat and you're supposed to put the compression straps through this buckle and then use the D-rings to clip on to like a carabiner on the back. But as you can see, it has a one inch buckle on this side as well. So I'm going to try maybe feeding this through one end and using, maybe, hopefully these will kind of jam in there and then I can come in and uh, feed it through this buckle. But I looked for photos of this backboard and every photo I saw had these really nice clips. The other thing too is that it's not even oriented the way that you'd want it to. You'd think it would be flat so it would sit in line with this buckle, but instead it's going to have a twist in it. I don't know. I don't know if this is an old design, a new design, or what's going on here exactly, but this is the situation. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that going now. So we can watch this live. Let's see. Okay, so. there was nothing in the instruction manual that uh, dealt with the optional backboard. Okay, so that's kind of jammed in there. And then, how do we feed you through here? Probably, probably up here. Oops, This way, and then kind of tension it like that. That's not bad. Um, 
I mean, it works. I don't love that that was not the original design intention, and I also don't love this gigantic tail because as a compression strap, you want this long, but to support the backboard, you'd really just want it short. In fact, what would be really nice is when you're assembling this, just like clip it, clip it, and then, you know, you're off to the races kind of thing. So, yeah, um, I'll uh, consider how that all pans out in, uh, yeah, when I go to do a, like a, a proper review video of this, so until then, let's just keep trying to uh, find solutions. supposed to be, I think. It's pretty centered. And then there's long tails trying to tuck in behind. Of course, being nylon, it's going to absorb all of the water. Tighten down the seat. That's right. There we go. Dare I say it. We're ready for the water. All right, so I said I had something, a uh, little surprise item, and this is exactly it here. This is made by a Canadian PFD company called Mustang Survival. And what this is, is this is a belt style. Let's get this on here. PFD. So inside here, there's a little cartridge, and I've tucked the uh, release cable off into it. Now what you're supposed to do is leave this like out, so you pull it and then it will pop up and it will create like a, um, like a flat PFD and then you just like loop that over the front of your head. Everything in life is about trade-offs, right? So the idea with this is this is a minimalist, small, lightweight, compact package for stand-up paddle boarders or you know, uh, pack rafters or whatever, especially if you're doing any kind of like bike packing trips with the pack raft. It's all about kind of, you know, having lightweight, minimal equipment, or at least that is for me. So this is a personal choice, right? I'm compromising the performance of like a front back, you know, huge PFD because any kind of pack rafting I would be doing uh, with this would be essentially just flat water or like you know, a Swift or something that I would feel confident, you know, swimming through is if I didn't even have a PFD on. So I'm actually really super stoked because it's so small and it's so lightweight. I just think it's a great, uh, a great solution for this type of market, especially when, you know, if you're sitting in, in the, the pack craft itself, you know, you don't have anything on your back that's kind of like, you know, obstructing and getting jammed up there. So yeah, and a really affordable price too. It comes in a couple of colors. I got, I think this is a gray. It reads kind of a bit blue and um, maybe like a slate. And I can't remember what else it came in, but uh, but yeah, I'm all about like the minimalist colors. So um, yeah, without further ado, I'm going to uh, grab some sunscreen. Uh, I have my bag on the ground behind me and then we'll head down to the water and uh, yeah, cruise around, go read a book. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Efficient way to do this. Probably like
we go. We're doing it. We are on the water. This backboard's really quite nice, actually. Just tweak it up a little bit. There we go. I would like to see some uh, some cable keepers, you know, like those little elastic uh, bands. You could easily fix something up on a sewing machine to get it done. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice to keep these little tails from flapping around. But uh, yeah, we're doing it. We're on the water. We are boating. We are boaters. That's uh, yeah. I mean, it's pretty incredible when you think. You know this packs down it you know into the size of a you know I think it's like a 40 liter backpack with all the pumps and paddles and everything included it's such a low cost entry I mean I think even if you compare if you compare like just the most rudimentary like hard kayaks that aren't even like spray skirt compatible like I'm thinking something that you'd get at Walmart or Canadian Tire I would put forth that they're probably less expensive but how much less expensive and how much less capable so one thing I am looking at right now are the, the D-rings they're like these just a little larger I think off to the side and that's something that uh, I think I might invest in a tether system with the camera so that way there's uh, well you guys don't end up in the bottom of the lake <laughs> that would be my strong preference for that to not happen but uh, yeah so we're drifting here I think I might go find a little uh, a little bay maybe head over to the reeds here and uh, yeah crack open my book let's do it Grab the chain and pull the other one up. There we go, two nice big bass. Well, good morning. I'll be honest, I thought about going out for morning paddle, but it was super overcast. Probably would have been nice still, but yeah, hung around, did a bit of cleaning of the trailer, more or less packed up. Just need to kind of pull the slide in and stash a couple of loose items away and ready to go. But I'm trying to like not hurry back home 
try to take advantage of the day. I mean, worst case scenario, I can always get some like takeout food or something like that to get me, you know, uh, through the, at least the first day of work tomorrow for lunches. So yeah, have a, a noodle here. These things are awesome. I started buying them. They're $2.50 Canadian. Uh, it is a plant-based organic ramen. This one's roasted chicken flavor by a company called Chef Wu. But I like them because they have 20 grams of protein per packet, cup thing here. And I'll admit, like, I did buy these with, like, you know, sort of winter, late fall camping in mind. But whatever. It's what I feel like. So, yeah. Um probably a good thing too as well that I didn't go for paddle because I was debating around um, the boat wet because I'll end up folding it down and storing it and uh, I won't necessarily have the time tonight to uh, to air it out so yeah that's my excuse so I'm sticking to so anyways yeah I'm gonna enjoy my uh, ramen here enjoy the weather and uh, yeah I'll see you in a few minutes when we're ready to pack up So, interesting situation last night, and I had deep, conflicting thoughts, which was, I got back to the boat launch, I was really quite hungry, needed some dinner, and I took the uh, pack raft out of the water, and the skag was missing, the little fin on the bottom. So, I thought, you know what, it was either right when I first put in, because I launched backward, and it's inserted from front to back, so any kind of back to front, I was thinking would have knocked it off, or it was, um, when I was all the way on the other side of the lake, and I got hung up on a log. So, I quick had something to eat, and then um, raced back, racing the light, and I was able to find it, so, yeah, uh, learn from my mistakes, but, I wanted to bring you with me, but I was worried about losing the whole camera in the water with how fast I was paddling. So, yeah, uh, decisions had to be made, but I wanted to share nonetheless. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's grab it and uh, fold it up. This is the skeg that came off. It inserts going front to back, but then if you knock it, it doesn't really take much. So it would be cool if um, maybe there was some kind of like a safety lock or something, uh, or maybe if this floated or all of the above. But yeah, just um, like I said, learn from my mistakes. I'm curious how long this process will take. I'm not going to rush, but I'm not going to dilly-dally either.
instructions said to fold it in half like this and then you fold it in half and then roll in there. Got it short enough. There, and these little things fall down, even though you can see one of mine isn't totally up. I feel like this pump is, yeah, kind of the worst part of this whole experience thus far, which, all things considered, not too bad. And I'll separate it so short like that. certainly enough room for some extra bits in there. Man, how nice is that? I think I have everything, right? Yeah. That's a whole pack raft. Like a good quality bag, too. This is really nice. This is what I was thinking. So there's this secondary entrance slash exit to this site for some reason. Now, when I came in, this site across from us was vacant, so I just pulled straight in, essentially. To get the vehicle in, I need to like sort of drive it up to the very edge of the site and then back it in. I could back it out and turn, but I was thinking about pulling forward backing it straight into that site and then leaving. That was before that blue truck got here. So I may just, depending on how well I can get it lined up coming in this way, I may just end up backing it um, out and down the standard way. It's just nice to not have like all of the objects of uh, destruction on the blind side where I could, could have essentially pulled the street. Now I can still, there is plenty of room, but um, yeah, I'll let the angle sort of dictate that, so.
was definitely a glue skull. I had my uh, keys on the tunnel cover. Whoops. Okay, so normally I would just kind of end the video here. And however, we are going to do something for the first time. Um, this is about as exciting or excited, excited as I will ever get for emptying waste. However, um, I think you'll see why once we get there. So I'm gonna drive out of here, it's a bumpy road. I won't uh, subject you to that because I don't really have you fashioned down right now. But um, yeah, when we get to our destination, then you will uh, see the magic. I don't know why I'm so weird today. Anyways, all right, let's uh, say goodbye to the lake. Definitely coming back, I love this place. Cool, all right, see you in a bit. All right, so the last time I camped down in this area, I ended up paying $10 just to dump the uh, black tank and there was no like flush or anything, um, at least not that I remember. However, we have a master your system. So while I don't have it in its final iteration, we're gonna throw some gloves on and hopefully I have enough uh, hose to make it to there. So I'm gonna measure out the hose first and then uh, if we're set, then uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's take the free route. Why did I wink? It's still really weird today. I don't know. That's the thing about like talking to the camera sometimes is, you know, you're trying to get a message across and be, you know, entertaining-ish, but then, you know, at sometimes the expense of authenticity. Yeah. All right, so this reiterated a few things to me. One, I desperately need to install a 12 volt socket outside. I had a plan, I kind of strayed from that plan, hoping for other reasons, which I'll explain in a future video, but yeah, 12 volt socket outside. Two, it works, awesome. I do want to invest in another seven foot section of hose because it just worked. And as you saw, I really couldn't have gotten any closer. So if it was set back any further, the door is on the other side or whatever, one, if not two sections more, and there's plenty of room in the bumper for it. So that's not an issue. Three, I definitely need to sort out like moisture management and stuff. Cause it ended up being that the plug was corroded. So I got to clean all that out. What else? Oh, four. I really need to figure out a way, if not me, then manufacturers in the future or whatever to, uh, have a universal takeoff like the quick connect style with the showers because even if you f like flush through with your gray tank I've, I actually this is the first trip I put in a, like a uh, one of those enzyme bags in the gray tank because you know you've got food and you know particles and stuff that's breaking down there it creates odor it stinks it looks just as bad because i you know i'm putting coffee grounds down there so um you know to the observers or whatever you know even though i know it's 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 gray water dishwater still um it would be you know i think good to be able to flush that out with some fresh clean water at least the the uh the common uh, pipe section between where you hook it up and the tank valves just to be able to rinse that out so yeah I kind of reiterated a few things there sorry I managed to stab my uh, my wrist trying to get those stupid end caps on what a 
I was gonna say what a dumb system, but if I just think it's uh, that cap system on the bumper. I like the storage in the bumper, but I feel like the caps could be improved upon. Maybe it's like a cam lock system or something. Anyways, I'm going to wash my hands, probably grab a Red Bull and hit the road. So yeah, appreciate you for, uh, for watching it again. Um, I'm so far behind at this point in editing. I have absolutely no idea what's coming out next, but rest assured, I'm working towards some cool stuff. I'm doing a lot of research in the background. I don't know. Do you guys have any interest in that? Like, you know, I, you know, do you want me talking about, you know, things that I'm working on? Uh, or would you rather just kind of like watch the video when it comes out? Um, yeah, I'd be kind of curious. I think there's pros and cons for both, right? You know, just creating a, a product for what it is or you know I, I don't know um i'm still trying to figure that out myself so if anybody has any any strong opinions one way or the other um let me know i'll take it into consideration so anyways thanks very much you take care and bye for now well this is a new one